Hi, let's talk about the intrinsic laryngeal muscles. Intrinsic laryngeal muscles are muscles which connect elements of the laryngoskeleton to itself. So, for instance, they may run between the cricoid cartilage and the arytenoid cartilage, or between the arytenoid cartilage and the thyroid cartilage. These are not muscles which connect elements of the laryngoskeleton to skeletal elements outside of the larynx. Those would be extrinsic laryngeal muscles. So to begin, let's discuss the cricothyroid muscle. The cricothyroid muscles, as their names would suggest, connect the cricoid cartilage to the thyroid cartilage. So we have a pair of them right here. This is an anterior view of the neck. Uh, we can see a little bit of the cricoid cartilage there. We can see a very nicely defined thyroid cartilage there. There is our laryngeal prominence. Here is that median cricothyroid membrane. And when these cricothyroid muscles contract, look at the directions of these grains. They're going to tip the thyroid cartilage anteriorly and inferiorly. When this happens, that places extra tension on the vocal ligaments, and that's going to increase pitch. The cricothyroid muscles are unique among all of the intrinsic laryngeal muscles in that they are the only intrinsic laryngeal muscles which are innervated by a nerve other than the recurrent laryngeal nerve. And that would be the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve, which is a branch of the vagus nerve. So let's turn our attention to the posterior aspect of the larynx. So I'll just circle the larynx for us here so that we can see it. So the laryngopharynx has been incised and reflected away to review, reveal the, uh, the larynx. And nestled here, let's erase this so we can get a little bit better of a view. Nestled here, um, and this would be posterior to the arytenoid cartilages. So there's one arytenoid cartilage. And there's the other arytenoid cartilage, but let's erase that. We can see muscles that crisscross, like so, and run transversely, like so. Together, these are known as the arytenoid muscles. And there are both oblique arytenoid muscles and transverse arytenoid muscles. Both of these are innervated by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Uh, these are going to adduct, adduct the arytenoids. So they're going to pull them towards the midline in a, in a gliding fashion. And when that happens, that's going to narrow the rima glottidis. So if I were to kind of draw an example here. So these would be the vocal folds. This would be the sort of the posterior cricoid lamina. And you'd have the arytenoid cartilages sitting there and there. What happens when we slide these arytenoid cartilages together is that the vocal folds slide together and this narrows the rima glottidis. So this would bring it into closer approximation for phonation. There are also cricoarytenoid muscles. Uh, so cricoarytenoid muscles are going to uh, attach the cricoid cartilage to the arytenoid cartilages. Um, 
sticking with our, our posterior view here, um, we can see two of these muscles, one there and the other there. And let's kind of draw in the grain so that we can appreciate what's going on here. So these cricho, these posterior cricho arytenoid muscles, so let's label this, this would be the, the posterior, are going to run from sort of the posterior medial aspect of the cricoid cartilage up to the muscular processes of the arytenoid cartilages. And when that happens, um, when these muscles contract as a result of um, stimulus from the recurrent laryngeal muscles, those arytenoid cartilages pivot. So let's look at what happens when they pivot. So there are our vocal folds. Here are those arytenoid cartilages. And I'll just draw that posterior aspect of the, uh, of the cricoid laminae there. So there's our muscular process. There are the vocal processes of the arytenoid cartilage. When the muscles contract, they're going to, oops, they're going to pivot the arytenoid cartilages that way. When that happens, that's going to pivot the vocal folds out of the way because these all turn in the same direction. And as a result, we expand the rima glottidis. And so we're, we're making this area more patent. We open it for maximum air exchange. So turning our attention here uh, to the left, so this would be a left lateral view of the larynx. So the thyroid uh, cartilage has been cut midline and this one has been reflected slightly away. Here's our cricoid cartilage here. Right here we can see our posterior cricoarytenoid muscle. We also have a lateral cricoarytenoid muscle here. And what happens with these lateral cricoarytenoid muscles, so we'll draw this again, like so. There's the muscular process. Again, when the lateral cricoarytenoid muscles contract, they pull the muscular processes this way, and so we have a pivoting inwards. So these lateral cricoarytenoid muscles are going to adduct the vocal folds and narrow the rima glottidis. Finally, we have the thyroarytenoid muscles. The thyroarytenoid muscles are going to attach the thyroid cartilage to the arytenoid cartilages. So the thyroid cartilage, we can see, has been cut there for the purposes of reflection. The cricoid cartilage and the posterior lamina there has been cut and reflected out so that we can see inward. And the mucosa has been stripped away so that we can see some of the elements, such as the vocal ligament here and there. And we can see these thyroarytenoid muscles. The thyroarytenoid muscles, when they contract, they're going to pull the arytenoid cartilages anteromedially towards the thyroid cartilage. And that's going to decrease tension on the vocal ligaments. So that's going to decrease pitch. And these are innervated like nearly all but one of the other intrinsic laryngeal muscles by the recurrent laryngeal nerves. Now, there is some debate 
Uh, there's inconsistency in, in how these muscles are named. Uh, some consider the fibers of the thyroretinoid muscles that are immediately adjacent to the vocal ligaments to be either specialized elements of thyroretinoid or their own separate muscles. So you'll very frequently hear them referred to as the vocalis muscles. And the vocalis muscles are going to, when they contract, add a little bit of lateral tension to the vocal ligaments. So they're going to um, affect their shape. So for instance, if you were to look at a cross section of a vocal ligament like this, when the vocalis muscle pulls on it, that would transform that into a thinner and flatter vocal ligament. And this is going to affect uh, timbre or the vocal quality of the sound or the tonal quality of the sound as it vibrates the, uh, the, the vocal fold. And uh, the vocalis muscle, owing to its ability to pull on, the, uh, on the, the vocal ligament, also is going to finely adjust pitch. So we've discussed the, uh, the several intrinsic laryngeal muscles and what it means to be an intrinsic laryngeal muscle, um, how that affects pitch by affecting the vocal ligaments, and how that affects the airway by either narrowing or expanding the rima glottidis. Thank you very much for your time.